Hello, it's me again, Engineer Makalinaw. Last time, I told you I'm going to discuss about the Euler's critical buckling stress for unsymmetrical section. So, if a certain section is not symmetric, you're going to utilize the product of inertia. But due to the request of my viewers, I'm going to discuss first the technique of differentiation for implicit function. Why? Because our calculator has no capability to directly evaluate derivative of functions written in implicit form. So sit back and enjoy learning. Basically, you have two ways to differentiate a certain function. Number one is by explicit differentiation and by implicit differentiation. So what are the difference of those two? When you say explicit differentiation, that is the process of taking the derivative of an explicit function. And what is the explicit function? A function that is expressed in terms of a single independent variable, as the one shown by our example, as y is expressed only in terms of a single variable x. In implicit differentiation, that is a process of taking the derivative of a function not expressed explicitly by a single independent variable. In short word, that is done in implicit functions. So what are the examples of explicit functions? As you can see here, y is not expressed in terms of x, but instead both sides of the equation contains not only one, but more than one type of variable here. Say for example, determine the slope of the curve y equals e to the x plus x cubed sine x squared when x is equal to 2. In this problem, y is expressed explicitly in terms of x in calculus that the slope of curve is dy over dx or derivative of y with respect to x or y prime. If you are just answering a multiple type of examination like in the Philippine C licensure examination in which you don't need to show you the solution, I doubt if you're going to do the conventional solution. Most of the students will not perform the conventional. Why? Because the calculator can perform differentiation. So if you want to do the conventional solution, it's like this. And if you do the calculator, you just press like this one. You just type and then press equals. The answer instantly pops out negative 22.609 in this case. But... Here is the problem. The limitation of your calculator is the function should be expressed explicitly. Say for example, in here, the function should be expressed in terms of a single variable only. Otherwise, you cannot use this t directly to solve the derivative of a function. So say for example, you have this problem. Determine the slope of the curve 128 xy cubed arc tangent of x squared y equals pi at point 0.2 and 0.25. Can I express this y in terms of x? If you can, but expressing it y in terms of x is a very difficult task because there is y inside the arctangent function and there is y outside of it. It's not just a simple algebraic function. So therefore, if the case is like that, you cannot directly put it in the calculator because the function should be expressed in terms of a single variable so in our case the y in terms of x how are you going to do this if you were going to do this manually you differentiate it with respect to x don't you ever forget this whenever you differentiate a function you should take note in which variable you are respecting say for example here you are taking the derivative of this function in terms of x implicit differentiation will give you this kind of solution so what did you notice this is very very long and tedious so it's very not efficient if you are just solving a multiple type of question wherein the solution is not required until you get this negative 0 0.0781, which is the slope of the curve at 2 and 0 0.25. Never, never forget that the slope of the curve is always derivative of y with respect to x, so negative 0 0.0781. The function is written implicitly. I will do this thing, right? It is a very difficult task. Sir, do you recommend this solution always? Basically not. Because of those things, it has a lot of disadvantages. Number one, it requires you to memorize differentiation formulas. Good luck if you can. <laughs> number two, it's very tedious and takes so long to perform. And number three, it's prone to human error. Because of course, the more solution 
the more detailed the solution is, the more it is prone to human error. That's why it's very inefficient. So, but the problem here is if the function ex is expressed implicitly, you cannot use your calculator directly. So, and an idea comes into my mind. I think of a concept of total derivative and the calculator. And I merge them and I devise a formula like this. The question is, how are you going to use this formula in determining the derivative of y with respect to x? Let us move on to our whiteboard. So how are you going to use this technique? The first step is to write in such a way that the right side of the equation is equal to 0. 128 xy cube arc tangent x squared y is equal to pi. So you make sure that the right side of our equation is 0. You just transpose the pi to the left side of the formula. So this one will become now 128 xy cube r tangent x squared y minus pi is equal to 0. This equation is our g of xy. We are asked to find the value of y prime at exactly point 2 and 0 0.25. Let me remind you, this technique is based on method of increments, meaning we're going to input a very, very small value later. So, you should make sure that the value of this equation is equal, theoretically, to zero, meaning there should be no discrepancy. Say, for example, if 2 and 0.25 is, sub is substituted in the values of x and y, the value of this should be theoretically equal to zero. Let me check. For easier calculation, you can actually store those values of x and y to letter x and y of your calculator. Take note. If you are performing calculus and there is a trigonometric or inverse trigonometric function here, you should put your calculator in region modes. How are you going to do that? You press shift set up. That's number four region. You store two and point twenty five to x and y respectively. Two you store it to x. For this one, 0 0.25, you store it to y. So you have this one. Let us try to press this one if this will give you an exact answer of zeros. 128 alpha x y cube. Our tangent which is tan inverse tangent. Alpha x squared y minus pi. And look, that is equal to zero. So we can proceed on our technique. If for instance, this formula is not equal exactly to zero. You should adjust the value of x and y. Just make it sure that this one is really equal exactly to zero. So what is a and b? For letter a, you put a very small increment. It depends on you. For me, it's okay to put 0 0.0001. Don't put so very, very small. Say, for example, you put times 10 to the negative 9 your calculator might mess the calculation because your calculator may be in out of range if you do that. So 0 0.001 is tolerable. So you add this one. And for letter B, that is Y plus, you should add the same amount of small increment. So for B, you add 0 0.0001. Those values should be stored respectively to A and B. Since we store 2 and 0.25 in x and y, alpha x plus, let me say that this is 0 0.0040s after the decimal point, and then you shift store it to letter A. And then replay this one, you press any of the key here, edit it, make it y, you erase this, and then you press shift store to B. You can now do this one. Negative g of a y over g of x b. As you can see here, this is our g of x y and we replace x by a. So meaning in this equation, all of the values of x here, all x here in the function will be replaced by letter a. So this one will become 128 a y cube arctangent a squared y minus pi. Look at this. G this is g of x b. So what does it mean? You type it again, but you're going to replace all variable y by letter b. So that would be 128x 
b cube or tangent x squared b minus pi. Let us type it in our calculator and see what is the answer then. So that's negative 128 alpha a So after typing it, we press equals and the answer is negative 0 0.0781. So you see, there is no need to memorize all the formula and perform the very long and tedious conventional process. So what source B is this? I derive it based on the concept of total derivative. So that is how you perform our technique on differentiating implicit functions. This function shift derivative cannot perform directly the differentiation of implicit function. Therefore, I made a very efficient formula for that case. On the next part of this video, I'm going to apply this on some of the problems in calculus. I hope you will watch the next part of this video.